Welcome everybody back to Friar Talk. Today we're going to be talking about Xander Bogarts and this kind of whole shortstop situation with the Padres. They've been linked to a bunch of shortstop as kind of a team that could go and grab a guy at shortstop and we haven't really discussed it yet um, unfortunately but this is one that's interesting because you have many 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 guys that can play shortstop on the roster already and if you just look at it from afar you go why in the world would the Padres get a shortstop when they have one Haseon Kim? two Fernando Tatis, three Jake Cronenworth, four Manny Machado, five. Like, it, it just – you keep adding everyone to the list. Jackson Merrill, right? Like you have so many different guys that could potentially play shortstop. So it, it sounds kind of weird. But then you think about Xander Bogarts as a potential option, and it seems like the thought is not to bring him in for a 10-year contract or something like that, but more to bring him in for a contract where it's a one- to two-year deal – where he's kind of resetting his value, I'm assuming it's more likely a one-year deal, um, kind of like Carlos Correa, how he went and signed with the Twins, kind of boosted that stock, and then is going to come out this year and probably sign a massive deal. It seems like the Potters are more interested in that type of situation. I think that makes sense. I don't think it makes any sense at all to go sign a shortstop for 10 years. I don't. I, I think that's like so illogical. But Xander Bogarts, he's a guy, he's hit – over 280 in seven of the last eight years, over a 350 on base percentage in the seven of the last eight years as well. And he has been a fantastic hitter. He's not a great fielder, I would say, but you can bump Kim to second. You can put him at second, um, and then you can you can bump uh, Cronenworth up to first if you are going to sign him. So, Isaac, what do you think about the idea of bringing in Xander Bogarts? I know we've talked about it a little bit off air, but – what are your overall thoughts on the Padres going and getting a, a shortstop at this time? It's a fun concept. I mean, I'm very <clears> – <throat> for a while, I was very against moving Fernando out of his shortstop position. But if you look at it and you have somebody like Xander Bogarts, Carlos Correa, Trey Turner, you know, all these guys on the market that are very good shortstops, not only at the plate, but some of them pretty solid defensively. Xander Bogarts, I think I saw, has like he's like in the 80th something percentile. When it comes to outs above average, pretty solid. I don't know what where he is in terms of defensive runs saved, but pretty solid. Um, <clears throat> now, I was against moving Fernando because that kind of I, I kind of thought it would kill his value, and I think he's a very electric player. So I feel like having him at the on the heart of the field is kind of like I don't know. I feel like he was perfect there. I feel like he was always in the action, always in the game, involved in every play, and I think that's. Fernando's that kind of guy that you want him involved in every play. He's so athletic. He can make incredible plays at any time. I mean, the most athletic guy normally plays shortstop, so that's why I kind of like him at shortstop. But moving him out to the outfield is – I'm not against it if you're bringing in a player like Xander Bogarts who consistently posts – I mean, what was his OPS this year? An 833 with like a 131 OPS plus, something like that. Um, still a very good hitter, has produced – greatly for the Red Sox and I feel like he might hit more home runs if not the same amount at Petco um, that is a giant ass wall over there in Boston so it'd be nice to see what he can do at Petco um, and, and I would say quite a short left field but a, definitely not a hitter's park um, it's, it's just a fun concept for us Padres fans I see some a lot of people actually kind of like the idea of bringing him in do I think that it'll happen I don't know I mean that I feel like Xander might actually command a maybe some more years than one or two. And the reason that we say one or two is because we need to make it a priority to, to extend Juan Soto. We don't need to make it a priority to keep Xander Bogarts. We don't even need to make it a priority to sign him. The one thing I could take away from this is if this shows anything, even if it means, you know, maybe the Padres are interested in a shortstop, but if they really are interested in Xander Bogarts, the guy that's probably going to command 25, 25 plus million, then at least they're willing to spend the big bucks to go get to go get a big a big star a star name you know whether that be Xander Bogarts, Carlos Correa, Trey Turner, Carlos Rodon, Kodai Senga, you know whatever guys that you're thinking of the Padres are clearly willing to spend if they are interested in Xander Bogarts. Um but since this episode is solely about Bogarts, you're talking a guy that's consistently posted great numbers at the plate. Um, has, hasn't hit below a 280 average in five years, hasn't hit below a 830 average in five years. 
consistent. The past five years have been amazing in terms of OPS plus. I mean, all across the board, he's just consistent, super consistent. And I think that's kind of something that was lacking in the Padres lineup last year is that other than Manny, you didn't really have consistency. You had Jake Cronenworth going on these cold streaks. Trent Grisham was on a cold streak almost all year. Even when Juan Soto came, he didn't exactly put up the best numbers. Josh Bell, same thing. It was one guy in the lineup that consistently posted numbers, and that was Manny Machado. And I think at times when you saw us go on these fat cold streaks, it was because we didn't have a consistent guy or another consistent guy to help help Manny out. Um I mean, we saw the lineup without Manny. It was it was disastrous, and I mean, we didn't have Juan Soto and all that yet, but it wasn't pretty. So I think getting getting another consistent bat would definitely be huge. You're already getting one. I mean, you're already getting one back in Fernando. That's a pretty damn consistent bat. So I don't know a top four of of Xander Bogarts, Fernando Tatis, Manny Machado, Juan Soto, however you want to put them. That's dangerous, man. That is dangerous. That is quite frankly maybe the best top four in all of baseball. And you look at the Dodgers last year, a lot of their production came from their top three, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Trey Turner. I think our top three going into this year is a little better. I think you got Fernando, you got Manny, you got Juan Soto. I think that's better than their three. Now, if you had another one, that's pretty significant. And that gives you, I mean, quite frankly, a top of the lineup that everyone should be scared of. And that's excluding, you know, um, Jake Cronenworth. Hassan Kim, um, you know, guys that are going to be also staples in the lineup. Um, so it's definitely an intriguing thought. It's super fun when you look at this lineup, the lineup and you say, damn, like this has potential to be one of the best lineups, but at what cost, you know, at what cost, um, you can't really afford to sign him for too many years. Do you blow all your money? We don't know how much money Sidler is actually willing to spend. Everyone's saying he doesn't want to go above the luxury tax. I'm thinking he does. Um, I mean, you, you hear what he says in some of these interviews. One in particular with Ben and Woods was, I like spending money. You can't take it with you. That's what he said. Um, so I feel like all signs are pointing to them wanting to spend more money than people think. And I think a sign is the interest or even the signing of Xander Bogarts. I got to say, I like the fact that every time it's like, oh, the Padres can't go and sign a guy like Xander Bogarts or a guy like Carlos Sardin or Jacob deGrom or wh whoever it is, right, for 20-plus, 30-plus million, whatever it is. And then you hear Peter Seidler talk, and he's like, yeah, I'm willing to spend as much money as I want to spend. Like, It's like, dude, these are two opposite stories. And it's like the Padres can't go and get Juan Soto. They would never be able to extend him. And then they go and they trade for Juan Soto, and then they're trying to extend him. It's like, well – Interesting. I, I believe we heard the same thing about, oh, the Padres can't go get a guy like Manny Machado after they, after they signed Eric Cosmer. Like, it's always the same thing. And then and then you read and you go, oh, they went and signed Manny Machado and they still wanted Bryce Harper. And they didn't land Bryce Harper. But guess what? They would have signed him. Like, we know that. We know that at this point. Like, we've seen what, they're, what the kind of moves that they make. That's what they try to make. Go ahead, go ahead. That, that year that I believe that year they signed Manny Machado and were interested in Bryce Harper. Was that the same year that they were trying to trade for Mookie Betts? Or maybe it was maybe the year it was one year off. I think it was one year yeah. off. Or maybe it was 20 the year after when the Dodgers got him. I know that they were final potential final suitors for Mookie Betts. Yeah, it's true. And, and, and we see these guys that the putters are all in on. And I think it's interesting because – at first, when, when the Xander Bogart said, and I think when we were recording the other day, I don't remember which episode it was, but we were talking about it, and I kind of mentioned, like, yeah, I don't like the idea of signing Xander Bogart. I don't in terms of if you're looking at it versus pitching. If you're going to sign a Carlos Rodon or a Jacob deGrom versus Xander Bogart, I would rather go get the ace pitcher. That That's my thought. But if you're looking at it from a, we want to make this lineup as good as possible, we're not going to be able to go get a DeGrom or a Rodon, maybe even a Senga. Maybe they feel like they're out on Senga, right? Like, so it's like, okay, we're not going to get a guy like that. We're, we're unfortunately, we're not going to be able to, we're going to have to either trade for pitching or we're going to have to sign some lower end pitchers. Maybe Benaya. I know everyone probably hates that idea right now. Maybe Bassett. I've heard Bassett kind of brought up like a lot of guys that are like more of like mid tier to low tier starters for that four or five spot. If you're going to do that and you still want to make a splash somehow, I do think at this point signing Xander Bogarts makes a lot of sense because if you're trying to improve the offense from an infield standpoint, that's probably your best bet. 
I don't think you're going to get Carlos Correa. I don't think you're going to be able to get Trey Turner. Those guys are going to get fat deals, in my opinion. If you're looking for a guy on a one-year deal, on a prove-it deal of almost like, hey, Xander's going to come here, be a complete monster for one to two years, right? And he's going to go and get paid for five or six years after that, if that's kind of his thought. I think it makes sense for him. I really think it does. And from the Padres perspective, we've talked about signing Josh Bell. Let's say Josh Bell wants 15 million and Bogarts wants 25 or 30. So a lot more, right? But if you're willing to spend the money, I think we would agree that you're more comfortable with Xander Bogarts coming to Petco Park and hitting. He's not a player that's dependent on power. He's a gap to gap hitter. He's a really good hitter. And if you bring him to the lineup, all of a sudden it's like, yeah, you might not bring that power. Because we talk about that all the time. The Potters need to add power. The Potters need to add power. The Potters need to add power, right? Well, if you have a bunch of great hitters and you add Fernando Tatis and you already have Manny Machado and Juan Soto, and then let's say you sign a, a cheap guy like a Will Myers, Luke Voigt, Trey Mancini, right? Someone that's not that much to be like a first base DH guy. You're in a really good spot offensively. Like that was a huge upgrade from you in terms of, Instead of getting like a, a first baseman, you sign a shortstop and then it, you know, you kick Cronenworth to first base. And if you look at it kind of like from afar, it's like, well, it's kind of weird to move Cronenworth to first base just because like he kind of loses value if you bring him the first. But as a team's perspective, it makes a little bit more sense when you're looking at, well, how great can we make this team opposed to how can we, you know, kind of get value out of Jake Cronenworth or get value out of Hasia and Kim? <clears throat> it makes a little bit more sense from a team value. So I think it makes a little bit more sense than I initially thought. I like the idea of adding him. I don't love the idea of adding him because I would rather see the Padres go more more all in on a Jacob deGrom or a Carlos Rodon or even go and sign Senga, even though that one could kind of backfire, I guess. But I think it, I think it makes sense now. Like I'm not, if it happens, if it happens, I'm going to be hyped. I'm going to be like, Yo, we just got one of the better hitters in the game. Like that's a that's a good, an exciting thing to to look at. So that's kind of where I'm at. But Isaac, if the Padres do indeed end up signing Xander Bogarts, how how would how do you think you would feel right after it happens? I'd feel great. I mean, that's the that's one of the you're, you're right. He's one of the better hitters in the game. Sig- significantly improves this lineup. Um, then you kind of look at the holes and you're like, oh, well, you still got. Trent Grisham, Austin Nola at your bottom of the lineup. Who's your left fielder? Blah, blah, blah. I think I think what we've seen from AJ Preller is that when he does this stuff, it's always, eh, we'll figure it out later. He always does that. I mean, it, it's always a matter of, eh, we'll figure it out later. Juan Soto, for example, is the epitome of, eh, we'll figure it out later in terms of how much is he going to, how much is he going to demand? Why is, are we going to have to blow up the farm? What's going to happen with our farm? All of those questions, those will all be answered later. And that's what that's kind of what I like about AJ Pillars. He always figures it out later. Um, now this is one of those moves that will be one of the bigger ones in baseball, considering you're you already had you didn't have the best lineup last year, but in the playoffs at times, yeah, you you kind of look like you had one of the best lineups. Um and, and adding Xander Bogarts to guys that are already established superstars. Um, you know, Manny Machado coming off a second place MVP finish, Juan Soto the year before that coming off a second place MVP finish, Fernando Tatis, a third place MVP finish, second place MVP finish. Um, who else am I? Jake Cronenworth, a four war player, Haseon Kim, three war player, four war player, whatever it is. I mean, there's so much value on this team already. And just adding somebody who I don't know what his war was this year, I want to say it was like five or six. Um, that, that that immensely proves the Padres lineup. I think another thing that's kind of being overlooked maybe a little bit is that if the Padres are really interested in signing a big name bat, they're going to go through to the trade market to trade for a starting pitcher because you, I mean, we'll talk about this more in the pitching episode, um, but you just saw, who was it? Boyd, something like that, um, get 10 million. You just saw Clevenger get 12 million. That's stupid. That's the pitching is at a premium right now. And, I don't know if we necessarily have the farm to be able to trade for a great pitcher, but there's always that one person that we don't know is available that AJ Preller ends up making available. Not through himself, not through his team, but it's always, what the heck, when was he available? How did AJ Preller get him? Sean Manaya is an example of that. Um, so, yeah, 
We'll see how that all goes. All goes. We're, you know, we're going back to your question. I would, I would definitely be happy. Are there other bats that I might prefer more? Yeah, of course. But that's a guy who's consistently posting an eight thirty plus OPS. I mean, this year was his lowest OPS in in five years, four or five years. Um, Fifteen home runs isn't anything to be crazy about, but slugging percentage is still what over four hundred something like that. Um, so. I love offense, man. I love offense, and and he would definitely bring, I mean, another element to this offense. Dude, yeah, 100%. And also, just you, you brought up the war. Dude, he posted over a six war this season. I, I wouldn't have expected that. I would have thought like four or five maybe. Six Wait. war is a really good player. So it's not like you're bringing – and I've heard people talk about like – so I, I think I tweeted this out on Twitter or something like that, but – Someone said, like, yeah, it's like it feels kind of similar to the Eric Hosmer deal. And they were more comparing it to like a guy that his slugging's going down, he's yeah. aging. And they were thinking that he was going to play first just because they were like, Kim and Corwin have such plus defenders. I think Bogarts gets a little like, he gets talked about like he's almost like a bad defender. He's not. Like, he's not a bad defender. Not at all. He's a pretty good defender. Is he like, extremely elite or does he look like they make like flashy plays and stuff as much no but he's still pretty solid at short and like also for a shortstop like that's one of the most important defensive positions so i think it's a little bit interesting but dude you're looking at it from like this dude's gonna come in and produce six war at shortstop like yeah that that's an upgrade like that's good that's huge um so i do think it, it would bring a lot of value in terms of that i do think it would help this team um, but it's just interesting because we don't know like really who the Padres are in on. Maybe they are in on Degrom, and if it becomes a, do you want to go like make the risk of Degrom or Bogarts? Like I'd probably rather just take the risk with Degrom. Um, but it's also at the same time, it's like, am I going to be upset if we get Bogarts? No, I I can't be upset. He's a great player. Like, and I will say though, if they do sign him to a long term deal, I'm going to be confused because yeah. yeah. If they sign him to a long-term deal and they don't keep Soto, that's going to look really weird. It's going to look really weird. There's no way around that. But I don't think that's really what they want to do. I think even if they do bring him in, bring him in for a long-term deal, I still think Juan Soto would be extended. And that's almost like a, hey, we're all in on this offense. Or, you know, kind of like them just letting everyone know. But I, I do like the idea of bringing in Xander Bogart. So, Isaac, anything you want to add before I take off on, on, on Xander Bogart here? Um, no, not necessarily on Xander Bogarts. We all know what we get out of him. We get a pretty damn good hitter that, I mean, it's not, to me, it's not the same as Eric Hosmer. Eric Hosmer was very clearly a wickedly horrible clubhouse presence. Um, no one, like I, I, you know, it might seem like Manny liked him, this and that. Maybe they did, but the fans didn't like him. The organization clearly, they were willing to pay off his contract and still got rid of him. They said, as long as you give us back a prospect, we'll pay the contract. You just got to take him. Jay Groom is a very expensive player, <laughs> technically. Um, so, no, it's not necessarily the same. I think, I mean, you're, you see Juan Soto lobbying for Xander Bogarts. Juan Soto wants Xander Bogarts. Um, so it's not necessarily the same. I think Xander Bogarts would fit in great with this culture, with the Padres and everything like that. Um, and that's a pretty wicked lineup. It's a very fun lineup. And there's other guys out there. There's, um, I don't know if you necessarily consider Josh Bell a big name, um, but there's Josh Bell. We saw what he did with the Padres. wasn't very impressive, but every other year he's pretty damn good. Um, there's Josh Bell. There's Brandon Nimmo. There's, um, Carlos Correa. There's a bunch of guys on the market that are sort of, Maybe not necessarily in the Xander Bogarts mode or mold, just different playing styles or different positions. But there's a lot of hitters out there, and if the Padres are willing to sign Xander Bogarts, there's other guys that they're willing to sign too. So stay tuned, I guess. Yeah, no doubt. So let us know. Are you guys? Do you guys like the idea of bringing in Xander Bogarts? Is there someone else that you really want? Um, and tomorrow we're gonna have an episode out about kind of like these top end pitchers. If the Padres can make a move for one of those guys. Um, I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. I, I would rather see the Padres go after like a high end starter. Um, at this point, even though we see a lot of those high end starters kind of fall off towards the end of their deals, yeah. I still think if your mentality is win now, we're trying to go all in. 
I think that helps your team a little bit more. But I do like the idea of bringing Xander Bogarts. I will not be upset. I think initially I kept, my thought was like, I'd be pretty upset if we ended up signing him. But you're signing a stud player. Like you're signing a guy that is, is an elite hitter. So I, I would be very, very happy if that was if this was the case and these rumors do indeed come true. But let us know what you think. Do you like the idea of bringing in Xander? Or would you rather kind of lean to pitching, lean to outfield, and kind of allocate your money elsewhere? And if that's the case, where would you rather allocate that money? But until then, uh, we'll talk about pitching tomorrow, and we'll see you guys then.